I don't think I've had a conversation with people who are like, eh, Techies is fine. It's like either no. yay or Bleh. Techies no. is one of those people that like like he's one of those ca- people. Yeah, he's actually a person. Mm-hmm. Um, he's, Smart art. he's one of those characters that just changes the entire way the game gets played. Yep. And a lot of people don't like that part. Yes. Like it's that that's that's the most alienating thing because you literally it's like I have to play a different style of Dota. Um, so does Brew to an extent, but the seconds. feeling of it is yeah. different. It's like, yeah. uh, you know, you need you know, there's this spider somewhere that you need to be careful of that can backstab you or can come out of fog or you know, crawl over trees. Mm-hmm. But with Techies, is like if you haven't seen it on the map for five minutes, you have like <laughs> no concept of where it's safe. Yep, and that can be. Very annoying. And the new map so, is, the new map as well makes it even worse. But anyway, I'll save all of that for the day we actually have a techies pickup. Yeah, we'll see if we get one. Um because it is I'm, currently s- I'm still dreaming that we get that we get I get I get to cast it as well, because I haven't got to have that. Techies is I believe I talked to Nahas or it was Red Eye I think about this. It is tied for least pick hero of all time at T. Yeah. So, the only the reason would be because like E. G. picked it, um you had that one game from Wings. Mm-hmm. That they that they picked it up, which was yeah, oh I, wow, that was hard. That was painful to watch. I think going into this TI, Techies had nine picks, and I would guess that five of them are probably TI e- five. Yeah, they'll be. So each it's been like one per year. So then. Wings yeah. did it once at TI six. It yeah. was the only game I think it. Yes. And yeah, the the hero it was tied with was I believe Meepo actually, at least picked hero. Really, but, Meepo? But I think so at TI. I think it was only nine games or something, but. Mm. Uh, you have to consider Meepo wasn't in the first couple of TIs. The hero wasn't available. Uh-huh. And after that, we didn't really have specialists, and Meepo was kind of bad for a while. And then now we're reaching a point where we have more people that are good at playing Meepo, more good Meepo games in general. So I think we're going to... I feel like it was the one, at least. But I could be wrong. Well, anyway. Yeah, draft is done. So Slander last pick up from Team Secret. And Ember. We actually had an, an Aghanim Scepter Slander played <laughs> in the last series, uh, which was... Very interesting to watch. Uh, and yeah, an Ember Spirit up from Moon. Man, there's so much water in Secret's lineup, actually. If he gets the eggs, there's going to be the pools, there's Kunkka, there's Morphling. But he doesn't, like, that doesn't. You picked Ember into all this water. What are you doing? <laughs> Maybe the fire will just steam things up. These kids are too young. These good Dota players are too young. They never experienced real Pokemon, so they don't know how to draft. Puppy, puppy knows. Hey, yeah, but puppy's puppy's got the psychic. Puppy knows. He's he's old. He got he got the lineup down. But this Ember pick, that's a young captain right there. That's and gotta be. I wish for a moment that that Crystal Maiden was not the feature hero, because then the pup sit next sits next to whoever is in the yeah. front. That's it's just funny. like an, it's an unloyal dog. <laughs> at no, the it's very just beginning. friendly dog. Just a friendly, just coming over to say hi. Yeah, there's nothing wrong with that. Okay, secret are gonna smoke out immediately. They wanna get. I think they. The primary goal of this is to get Puppy's two wards out. He wants to get specific lane matchups. They would like the Slardar to lane against the Lifestealer and not Beastmaster. Um, and if they do accomplish that, their supports are kind of free to move. They could play the Mirana with the Slardar and it would be fine. They could play the Bane with the Slardar and it would be fine. And that frees up Mirana to move around. So let's see how they go about this for now. <laughs> Do you like the sounds? It's it's the sounds that is like he doesn't he ca- he realizes that I can't play drums because I'm holding axes, <laughs> and then just destroys the drum. Are they getting what they want? So far, they are. Yeah, they, they is got their one ward in mid to watch Moon. He didn't even he move out to place the other one. Yeah, he's just holding back on it. Zayas has been the over aggressive. I have a tree that I can hide behind. <laughs> All right, so it looks like it's just going to be an easy 2-2 rune. No contest for either of these. Or any of these. It's mid one hides in trees. Nico hides inside of trees. And we get a very classic secret. Hero in the mid lane. Morphling played by Nisha. They love putting this hero mid when they can because uh, the hero needs levels. It gets so much stronger in level 5 and especially level 7. Mm-hmm. And in these side lanes, Morphling right now is actually pretty weak in side lanes. But since Mineski's last pick is a more favored lane, he is more than happy to go mid and play against this Ember. It's Pop- not that favored anymore, but I think they will have a good time. Puppy planted his last ward down. He waited a long time to do it, but is watching the rotation through the bottom river <laughs> and anything in towards mid. So protecting Nisha in case Stragy Potato wants to move off. And Puppy with Brain Sap. 
<laughs> I mean, he could have actually waited to hit them, but doesn't matter. Didn't he get the range creep? Yeah, he did. Yeah. And I'm just like, uh, he could have actually hit a couple of times, but because of the timing of the range creep, at least get some of the life steal to go to work. Money, money, money. Oh, top lane. Maiden's actually just dead. Wow. What the? He got caught in the trees? He was standing in the tree line and got arrowed, and then Slaughter primed up a bash too. I love it. They're just high-fiving each other. Well done, boys. First blood for Yaps or Mirana. I've seen that before. <laughs> a lot of times. And you'll see that again. And this this is the perfect way to, for him to play. He loves this, right? So he's going to go into the jungle, arrow the big creep, get level 2. Might even farm up the camp. But Mineski have thought ahead and placed a defensive ward in their own jungle so that Moon doesn't get arrowed from above into this mid lane. If Yapsor tries these rotations, they're likely to fail. But he can always go back top and ha probably find success, honestly. This safe lane of uh, Ninja Boogie and Nico is not very strong. Yeah, but here's that movement in towards me as you're talking about. But Moon, wait, oh. he had the ward! He saw it! This is the second time today that Moon gets ganked by a hero that just runs through vision, right? Yeah. We had that earlier today as well. Yeah, we did. And like the ward, the ward earlier today, like the one we're talking about, was planted up here. So the vision came a little later. Yeah. But this one was up here and most definitely yeah. sees the Marana's direction. A lot of time. This was coming. Yep. He was literally sitting there farming. Maybe that's why he stopped watching. But yep, so that's uh, two for two. Yeah. Obviously, not all going the way of him for kills, but that's better. He's back top. Here oh. comes the arrow forward. Okay. Ninja, Ninja, we got Ninja. out in time. Like how Zai was also holding that uh, last hit bash, ready to go. Just in case the timing was going to be right for him. With a five second arrow, you can probably bash first hit for the extra damage, hit two more times, crush, and then hit two more times and get another bash. It should be possible for him to get four attacks off. Unless he gets Maiden Nova. Oh, oh there's lots of damage. Crush. Maiden is out to the side pulling. He's, He's open woundsing to run away from Zai. And yeah, without the Crystal Maiden. He Nico. doesn't have rage. No, and there's a short range arrow. Zai. One more hit, he's dead. Yeah. Need that bash. Yeah, oh. jumping forward. The Nova tries to buy a little bit of space. No sprint. Leap, leap, and go. One more attack. 48 HP. He's regening through it. Oh, hello. <laughs> no more chances. <laughs> yeah, uh. found towers as well as Creep Wave. Even if Lifestealer doesn't die, this is such a big loss for him. They don't have a healing salve in the lane, so he can't see us. Nisha's about a solo moon. Ah, uh, no, he doesn't have waveform. He actually went at 0 2 2. So, uh, no waveform to close the distance and get up the hill. While well, Rage of Potato on bottom lane, Poppy was going against it. Mid one gets a good tie, bring a splash out through KP and Rage of Potato. And once again, Zai right on top of Nico. As he said, he's going he's gonna to lose out. And they just keep him so low, he can't move forward. Like, Yapso doesn't care about his own life. He might want to start caring about where that Observer what is, because it's at least letting them know where, um. where the arrows come from. <laughs> you see the desperation. Nico is starting to open wounds melee creeps because he really needs to heal. He has made Nora, so better conditions than usual for this kind of play, at least. But it's still not really what you're aiming to do as life stealer. A bottom lane X mark. Yeah, Puppy's waiting with the level two brain sam, so they just send him up and Puppy will get the kill. Do you like this build as well for the morphling? Like just going for mass wraith bands into treads? Yeah. Like, I think Nisha you don't actually need regeneration against Moon. I think Nisha pioneered this build. No, so here's here's the thing that's kinda stupid about Morphling, right? Look at him right now. Yeah. He's gonna morph everything into agility. And now he's morphing back into strength. He just healed himself 300 for nothing. As long as you don't die in a burst, Morphling has infinite regen um, by just going all agility and then back to strength. So if Moon pokes him a bit now, all this damage doesn't matter. It, he's doing zero damage because Nisha will just morph into strength and then he will outrange. You'll see it again in a second. In mid, if you go back and watch it. Now we he's can gonna, go watch it. He's going to make sure he doesn't get slighted now. Back into full agility. Come on then. Oh, he's using the shop or what? Maybe he doesn't think he has time. Oh, now he's doing it. See? All into agility. And back. So, percentage-wise, he went from having 20% health to 50. Pretty much. Or 40. Yeah. I suppose he could just keep rinsing and repeating this, too. If Morphling couldn't do this, it would be a way less favorite here. 
but it makes such a big difference for its laning. You see, that's why it's winning this lane. If that wasn't a part of it, Ember would win on Harass, but can't do it. Interesting exchange between Puppy and... A little nightmare, and there's support coming in as Marana. Arrow flies from Yapsol. It's only going to be a shorter stun. Not a full five seconds, but it will still be long enough to kill off Ogre. He can only stun up one hero, which means Yapsol will finish the job. Puppy, hey, if you attack, you get me more fantasy points. Um, but he'll leap forward, and Yapsol will take it instead. <laughs> that was close. Ah, oh, he had another leap. Okay. But that means that Yapsol does at least move off the top lane. There's more threat to KP on the bottom. And this hasn't been a fun game for KP. He's at least still managed to find 19 CS, so that's not terrible. Uh, Yapso feels good about leaving top because Zai's game is already this good. He's getting level 6, minute 7 here. And that is a, an annoying matchup for the Lifestealer. When the when the Haze starts coming into play, he was kind of going to need help nonstop or he will get killed off as we oh, get another KP's kill bottom. Dead, but I'm just watching Moon and Nisha just going hammer and tongs and Nisha. He remember he doesn't have the waveform. His adaptive strike was just coming off cooldown. If that connected on Moon, maybe he had enough damage to find the kill. Man, isn't it just super unfair? <laughs> They're just trading really closely, and Nisha's just like, I didn't uh, take damage, did you? I'm, I'm, back, <laughs> to, well, I'm back to one third. Ah, uh, what a concept. Uh, mid one's looking for the X mark on the KP. Going in a little deeper. Now, Ragey Potato. He'll present himself. X Mark will go into Ragey Potato, but nice done. It's going to mess up the oh. timing of the X Mark back, and the arrow from Yapsol was not there either. Puppy has to s sleep up Moon. The Night oh, night Nightmare will be transferred over to Ragey Potato. Now, Moon just kind of stops and spirits back towards mid. He realizes this is this ain't happening. Nisha, <laughs> what are you. He doesn't even have waveform when he's in this deep. Like, I know, I know he's strong, but this also seems a little crazy. Mid one and Puppy finding the Yoga, working with Yapsaw. And they can leave an aggressive Observer Ward behind if they want to. They already have up behind the tower. Well, it's like Nisha just doesn't have any fear in the world. Just going again. <laughs> Ninja Boogie's gonna come in. He can actually provide the route. It's pointless. Yep. <laughs> it's just pointless. Oh, it really Zai, is, though. top lane. Hey, here you go, Nico. Looking to get on top of him. He may be able to do so. Stick charges, phase boots, and sprint, and uh, I take it all back. 44 HP, and he'll walk it off. So the reason I'm saying it's pointless is that not only is Nisha not really taking damage, but you showed your maiden. You gave information away to the enemy team, and you gained nothing. The, the way you approach this, if there's a Morphling mid that is just infinite regening like this, is either you bring heroes that can burst him, or you just have to accept that this is how he's going to play. And you play on the rest of the map. You combine your heroes and find kills elsewhere. The more time they spend on Nisha, the worse if they don't kill him. It's similar to Timbersaw, right? It's the same <laughs> logic. Like, Timbersaw, you, if you're not killing him, he's just sitting there non-stop regening, living forever. And there you yep. go. Half HP again. Yep. Wait until he finishes up that Lincoln Spear, which is his, his primary... The primary item he gets after just the first utilities. It's also why Mor Morbid Mask is so good on Morphling, right? Because just even a casual Morbid, you morph everything into agility, and the percentage-based health that you heal for attack is super high, and then you can just morph a little bit into strength when you need it to have that way more tankiness. He's going to go for Lincoln's, that though, with the Ring of Health first. And pressure is mounting on mid. they got to do something about it. Boogie would like to. Like, he just hits level 5 now. It's only a second point up in Nova. You can root up Nisha. He just strength morphs a little bit. Mid one will make his way over to a Ninja Boogie. Oh, well, the torrent, Ninja Boogie. He'll at least be able to survive a little longer, but uh, he was backing himself into a corner. Top lane, top lane, Zai being dove underneath the tier one tower. Support can't come to him in time. The crush gets onto Moon. He has a slider fist, but the tower is still going to keep attacking him. And with that corrosive haze, Moon just has to wand and bottle up to stay alive. They lost a full mid tower for that. <laughs> and Puffy just arrow Ogre Bajai, full five seconds done in from Yapsol. The easy setup. Nico's moving over to try and help out. Leaps away before the sun's able to connect, or connect over on Yapsol. Goes into Puppy instead. Anisha would love a fight. Waveforms forward, turns into the Ogre. Can't get in range for the stun. But he'll bloodlust himself up. That'll work. <laughs> That's nice. Great start for Secret overall. Uh, they got the lanes they wanted. They played the lanes really well. So they've accumulated a 3k gold lead, minute 10. They took the mid tier 1 tower, which is super huge. And you just see, just what a nice graph to look at, the gold graph, right? It's that just one. Steady increase of advantage. 
not slipping up. The biggest slip up was Zai's death top, but it was really valuable death because they got a mid tower. <laughs> it feels like Puppy is more than just bait right now. He knows he can't instantly die, but they can nightmare over on Nico. Is stolen over to the Crystal Maiden. Mirana's nowhere near there to lend an arrow, but Zai can get the crush. Moon will die in the meantime to mid one, but Nisha, he's your bigger fighter. Come straight in, so Moon worked with Yapsaw. That's where the arrow was. And Zai's not giving up yet. They're still using Moonline Shadow. They're coming in deep. They see where Ragey Potato is moving into the tree lines. This instant bash from Zai. Send him up, bring him back down again. Nishi will take the tower on top lane in the meantime while Puppy takes the life of Raging Potato. It's a level 10 Kun coming at 11, and he was a safe laner. <clears throat> Secret's cores are super high level. <laughs> yeah. uh, everything is going according to plan here. This looks like uh, if, if they continue at this pace and Mineski don't find some good place, this is going to be an absolute beatdown. Yeah. You gotta... <laughs> yeah. Uh <-huh>. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, this is what you need to do. Group up around the Beastmaster with something. It's the lifesteal in this case, but use the Beastmaster aura to start pushing towers. Get the bottom tower, maybe cross into mid and try to get the mid tower. Oh, X mark. Oh, mid one's going again. You might try to arrow. Oh, Bane's on the way in, but uh, yeah, it's on cooldown. Puppy will arrive. Ninja Boogie shows himself in the trees by throwing the Nova. Mid one gets the torrent. This time he predicts perfectly on Ninja Boogie. And that's another kill. That's actually Puppy's fourth kill of the 11 in this game. While up on top, Nisha hitting into Raging Potato. He's letting Yapsor and Zai finish the job. He's even just focusing on the tower because he doesn't care. It's like Raging Potato's gonna die to Yapsor anyway. That's now his third kill of the game. And Mineski, at least in something in return, they managed to claim the bottom tier one. Nico and KP working together. Puppy on the back of a Haystrune. Now TP support arriving, not one, but two. Mid one, hits the X mark spot, and it's over on KP. It's the one that can't rage. So KP, nothing he can do to keep himself alive. And mid one even uses the boar to hit the tiebringer off. I actually think Puppy could have maybe chased further with his haste and caught the lifestealer. Uh, and they could have got both kills there. But I think they were lacking information about where the rest of the Mineski team was, so he didn't fancy going that deep for the kill. But they still, they get one core. <coughs> They're totally free farming on the Morphling in the meantime. You've almost got Atos finished on Yapsaw. Like yep. we're 13 minutes into the game. Great item against Ember. Just that, that root ever since the change to Ember. Mm -hmm. Mineski have got to be feeling cornered. They've lost three towers, four towers actually. And everywhere they go, they're scared of the Moonlight Shadow ganks, they're scared of getting gripped, they're scared of getting X. Like all of Secret's heroes have catch except the Morphling. That's so if you don't have vision, the whole map is a minefield. That's why this observer what they have planted down is really like its value for them. They're gonna smoke up the fresh observer ward planted down from the other side of the tree, so it won't be detected by Mineski. Oh, look what Beastmaster's buying, Toby. Oh, the Beastmaster is buying a necro book. What? Okay. You wanted this item. Well, I, I, I just say I wanted it. Like we were talking about how it was never bought. <laughs> so I'm not saying I want it in this game. Because I feel like right now it's just gonna be money for Team Secret. They're going for Roshan. And Mineski smoke, they've wrapped around so far. Yabsol will reveal himself in mid, so they may just try and jump this. But Yabsol's got jumps of his own and Roshan's already dead. Killed by Radiant, Nisha has the Aegis of the Immortal. And Moon will spirit himself away from Puppy, but Right now, it doesn't seem like Team Secret care anyway. They just push up mid, they take another tower, they can potentially take the tier three. Yeah, Mineski didn't accomplish anything, so they don't have to worry. They didn't threaten a tower, they didn't find any heroes. They've just taken over the area. Secret knows exactly where they are. It's pretty apparent from the game state and even a little bit of vision that Poppy has placed down here. What Mineski are doing? So they're just gonna go mid and say, hey Mineski, you guys wanna fight or not? And if the answer is no, you're gonna lose your tier two in about 10 seconds to these two heroes. Yeah. Mid one not even using the solar crest on his morphling. I want to make this a bit a little bit faster. I think they're still trying to finish up the Beastmaster's uh, necro. Into the mid, Bane, Fiend's grip, right on top of Moon. Yapsaw's waiting. He doesn't want to throw the arrow just yet. Now he will, waiting for the longest possible time. Zion will find the kill, but uh, Moonline Shadow set up once again. That's why they've been so scared of it. And Moon felt safe because of the hawk, but. You're playing against Moonlight, so you can get caught at any point. 
when you go for these split push plays that is kind of an integral way, uh, integral part of how you play Ember. And he really wants this vessel so he can deal with the Morphling, but Morph sitting on the Aegis already. Lincoln's. He's still, even when he gets vesseled, he's going to be a hard kill this game because they don't really have the control that they would want. And Nico still is trying to build into the Radiance. Like, that's that's the upside of the damage they did to the bottom lane. Beastmaster's coming in, combining with the Catapult, and uh, yeah, Nico's just like, all right, fine. If, if Team Tiga want to try and force this, then they can do it. Nisha will TP back, and this effectively stops the push on top lane and buys Mineski a little bit more time to breathe. But you're 3,600 gold into the Radiance for Nico. They're getting some of the team fight elements they need. Necrobook, Radiance, Spirit Vessel. It's, it's, there, getting, there's, it's there's getting there. A, there's a plan. There's a plan for Maneski, and that's that's the upside. There's a plan, and there's a narrow window where it feels possible to execute that plan. Oh, Moon, don't stick around this long. He knows he needs to try and get a little bit more, but he wasn't ready for the Rod of Atos, Arrow Control. It is amazing, too, the range you can get on that. Liapsor can set himself up for a five-second stun. And because he bought the Spirit Vessel, there is no buyback. Don't think Secret are going to knock on the high ground this fast. But they might find an extra kill puppy far in behind enemy lines. Yeah, one of Nietzsche's coming over. They see him with the Observer and Sentry. Oh, there you go. Ah, poor Crystal Maiden. Zai's moving over. The Torrent will hold him there. And then Poppy with the Brain Sap. There's a couple more hits will do the job. Amplify him up, and uh, that's Puppy's fifth kill and sixth assist. <laughs> Involved in 11 of the 16 kills of Team Secret. Then he's meant to be playing like the cause, right? <laughs> that's, uh, yeah, 13.5 on the fantasy points. You'll take it. All right, the X mark, just a quick refresh up from Zai. Nisha, there's your Spirit Vessel going to work. Only got one charge. Nisha just wave bombs away, and the root is over on the Ember Spirit. But the Multicast keeping Slider away from him and giving Moon that time to get the side of Fist off. But with Fiendscrim and the boat, it's all coming the way. And the crush, goodbye to Moon. But they're in very deep here. Team Secret copped a lot of damage to do what they've done, but it may not matter if all of Mineski are dead and they can't fight. Boogie will die underneath the tier 3 tower. Zai is the only one who's really low, and well, Nico. He's running out of life, and Nisha just slide of fisting through everyone. Mid one will kill off KP. And this really is a smackdown. The mid me melee racks will fall without the Ember Spirit. The defense really isn't there, and the real Ember Spirit is in Nisha. What can you say, really? Uh, apart from Dude's getting owned. <laughs> I mean, there isn't much else to say. The tempo, Lifesteal isn't ready yet. They've already lost Elena Rax. Mm -hmm. They're going for the second one. Aegis has still got another minute left on it. They can't kill this Morphling. Yep, Lincoln Spear's gonna trigger it every time. Gonna chill. Yep. Even if they did, like, you just break the Aegis, the Immortal, and you'll come back and fight again. Even Even use his healing self, he's full HP. Mm -hmm. Even once the Radiance is here, like, Lifesteal is still working towards it. He just needs the recipe. But, like, what does Moon do? Slide of Fist, try and dodge anything like the Atos that comes his way. A quick spirit, but that's not that far away. And, man, Nico, he gets bashed up by Slada. He's jumped inside the one creep that can provide him some level of protection. But the rest of his team isn't there ready to fight. And they're losing their racks quickly, just regening as quick as they can, Maneski, to get back on the front lines. Beastmaster Rock now coming off cooldown, but... Who do you go on? The Lincoln Sphere has been broken on Nisha. We've got another eight second window on that, but the Rod of Atos on KP and a follow-up arrow into Torrent. KP can't survive. You'll have to buy back quickly because there really is nothing else to do here apart from fight until you're all dead. Ember Spirit getting a hit by the ship. There's nothing more to do. That's, that's really, it's, it's the game. It's the game. Nisha just got himself a triple kill. GG is called by Ninja Boogie. 24 to one. That, I think now is Team Secret are the only team that's won games in under 20 minutes, 19.55. And they've done it twice? They've done it twice, because the other game was like 19.57 or no, something like that, I think. Secret Infamous, I th or was it? Yeah, yeah. I want to say yes, but I know it was Team Secret who won the game. Not 100% on that. Yeah. <laughs> Either way, that's, uh, yeah, I don't think there's much more to say about that yep. game.